Hey, this is Steven with TechMaker.tv. This is building a link shortener with Ruby on Rails 6, part eight. In this video, we're gonna start working on hooking up the front end a little bit more. So I'm gonna go ahead and start my server over here. And we probably won't need to do much else in the terminal in this video. So I'm gonna go ahead and move over my editor and hook up a browser. Okay, so let's recall where we were. So we have this form field set up here um, where if we type something in and we click create link, um, it ends up hitting this links controller. And so we're running the shortener. We're setting the uh, link to be generate short link on the shortener. Um, and then we have this create JS response and it's just console logging the lookup code. And um, that's basically it for the moment. So let's start by just adding um, a div to display the link that we're gonna have. So we're gonna say, uh, I'm gonna make this an ID. We're gonna actually make this look much better soon. So right now I'm kind of just roughing in an idea. Um, we're probably gonna hook up Bootstrap or something like that in the next episode or two and kind of actually implement a little bit of a layout. Nothing too fancy, but it should be nice. Um, but for now, I'm just going to call this short link. And that's just going to be an empty div. And then back over in, and so if I refresh over here, there shouldn't be anything. Um, if I refresh over here, um, what we can do, so we already have the lookup code here in a variable. So then we can say, uh, let's grab the element um, with document.getElement by ID and then let's say short link and then let's just set the element HTML to be the lookup code for now um, element dot inner HTML equals lookup code so let's run this and see what happens so let's go over here and let's just type something in and get element by ID is not an option. Oh, I think it's because I don't need to capitalize that. Probably gonna have the same problem with the HTML thing. Oh no, no, it's working. So that's how that works. Okay, so we have a couple of obvious uh, shortcomings here. This actually isn't a URL, it's just a code. So we need to fix that. And then additionally, this isn't a valid URL and this in fact isn't saving to the database um, in our test that we wrote in the last section sort of prevent that. So the only reason that's showing up is because we are initializing the object with that there. So what we need to do is check if the object is essentially valid or is saved to the database and then only show this if that's the case. And we also need to make this a real URL. Okay, so let's start by the problem of it showing something that's not actually saved. So let's hook up something in this create action. Um, so what we want to do is essentially say um, if, well, no, not here. So under this, we can say if at link dot persisted and then uh, otherwise do something else. So right here, we can just say respond to JS. I'm not actually sure that's really required right here, but let's just kind of stick it in there. Um, else we want to render, let's call it like error.js.erb. And let's see what this does just by having this right here. Let's just click and let's just see what happens. So we get an internal server error. So let's pull up our terminal. And it's going to tell us it's got a missing template links error. So what I'm going to do is create a new file here called error.js.erb. And then I'm going to copy these two lines. And I'm going to set a message. So I'm going to say variable message equals, put a string together, and I'm going to say, um, uh, how can we do this? Link dot errors dot full messages dot join. And I think we want to join with just a period. 
and then I'm going to stick an additional period at the end. And then here, I'm going to make this just say messages. So let's see what this does. I kind of don't know if I typed all that out right. Uh, no, messages is not defined. Wait a second. Message. There we go. Okay, so now we're getting a message printing out saying original URL invalid URL format. Okay, so that's not the most friendly uh, message in the world, so we probably need to work on that. Uh, but let's just explain really quickly where this is coming from if you haven't seen this before. So this link object is an active record object, and those have an errors, essentially an array, or some uh, sort of a collection of error objects. Um, and we can see when we look at our model link here, we're adding an error to the, uh, the collection of errors uh, called original URL invalid URL format. So it's, it's taking that and, and um, essentially just printing it out here. And what we're doing over here with this text is if there were other errors potentially, um, it, would, it would actually print them both. So let's take a look at that if we just remove that. So we get two errors if it's blank. It can't be blank and it's an invalid format. So that kind of makes sense. Um, I don't think those read perfectly well. And the reason that we have this appending an additional period on the back, there may be a better way to do this, but it's just something kind of I threw together. But like if we take this away, you'll see that um, now there's no period at the end because it's joining everything in the array, but nothing happens to the last one. So Anyway, that's just kind of a little thing you can do to kind of have a nice uh, print out there, but that kind of resolves that issue. So let's move on to actually showing a real short link. So I think we can actually keep this pretty simple for the moment. Uh, eventually, well, let's just keep it simple and we'll talk about what we need to do eventually later. Okay, so what I want to do is First and foremost, how could we do this in the most straightforward way possible? Well, we could create a URL here straight up in the JavaScript, right? So we could say variable uh, short link equals um, HTTP localhost 3000 slash plus lookup code and I think for keeping things simple, I might just actually put like a, I don't know, what should we call this, like S right here for short. Um, and then right here, we could make the HTML have the short link. Okay, so we're still getting the errors if we put in something invalid. If we put in something like that, now we're getting a short link. But we, we really don't want this happening here in this JavaScript. I mean, this is really just display um, logic, but this is actually very critical to the app logic, right? I mean, what the URL is going to be ultimately. So I want to actually put that back here in the link. And um, I'm going to call this, let's create a method called shortened URL. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to create a string and I'm going to say HTTP colon slash slash localhost 3000 slash and then you can do this uh, string interoperability I think is what you call it, interpolation I think anyway um, and then we'll just say in here lookup code. So, and I think I actually like this better, just naked, so no slash s right here. Uh, we'll just have to worry about that in the routes later. Um, and then what we're going to do in our create.js is instead of doing anything with the lookup code, we really don't care about any of that. What we want to do is just say the inner HTML is, uh, and I need to put quotes around this, at link.shortened URL. So let's try this again. Let's do this create link here. And we're still getting a short link. And 
as you can see that changed so it's different every time um, let's see what else do we need to do so the next steps well a couple of things so first of all we don't really want localhost 3000 hard-coded in here ultimately we're going to turn this into an environment variable but I'm not going to worry about that just yet because we don't really uh, care yet because we haven't deployed this but we will eventually so we will switch that out so that when you're on production you'll put your actual domain in there um, we obviously have a lot of styling to do here because this looks like junk um, and we also need to set it up so that you can actually visit this URL and then get redirected to the original URL location. We probably also don't want to generate unique URLs um, every time you click on this. Um, it may need to be dependent upon something in the session because, for example, if somebody else puts this URL, we would like to give them a different code. But if I'm sitting here click, clicking this button over and over and over again, I probably just want to like keep track of okay you're the same person so we're gonna give you the same code back um, something like that we also probably need to beef up our tests a little bit because I kind of did a little bit of work here without doing any testing I can tend to do that sometimes whenever I'm just kind of doing mostly front-end stuff um, we did add a little bit of logic to the controller here uh, it's very minimal though um, but still Anyway, so that's it for this episode. If you're still tracking with me and you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, definitely do that. And also check out the other series that we're working on right now. Um, we've got another one on building a stock market tracker with React.js and a handful of other new ones we're about to start. So uh, definitely subscribe to the channel and definitely check those out. But that's it for me for now. So I will talk to you next time.